Large-scale transport operations can be a hugely complex jigsaw puzzle, requiring more brain power than a Mensa convention on Adderall. And if they go wrong, well, things can get really serious really fast. And in today's video, you're going to find out how. These are the 20 most epic transport operations in history. Number 20. The Buchanan Mansion Preserving old buildings really does get rather in the way of a whole lot of potential money-making schemes, you know. And if you're a big old property tycoon, then there's nothing less fun to hear than, well, there's a preservation order on that site, so we have to scale down. But of course, I could contradict that with saying there's an even worse thing to hear, and that would be, we're getting audited by the IRS. <laughs> That's a whole different story, though. This is the unlikely tale of the Buchanan Mansion. It was moved for a more convenient location five miles down the street. Weighing in at 300 tons, the 125-year-old brick-built mansion was hoisted and wedged and inched forward very carefully until it was finally atop enough wheels to transport it along the street. It would take a team of 20 crew members over an hour to position the house, and then the big question would be answered. Would the house fall off on the journey? Well, fortunately, there were no bridges en route. Things went approximately according to plan, and the the house was parked in its new place atop wooden cribs while it awaited a shiny new foundation. It does lend a whole new meaning to the term moving house. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. One look at this ship and how much it has to transport, and you can't tell me that it's not epic. Now granted, it's not necessarily the amount that's mad, but the way that it's all stacked. Normally, this number of crates would be spread out across a larger ship and not piled up in a tower like this. It looks like the world's most high-stakes game of Jenga. Even the tiniest gust of wind could have caused it to topple over if the captain was not a true master of his craft. But thankfully, they were, and this entire shipment made it to shore successfully. Originally, these crates were supposed to be on a larger ship, but when said ship was unavailable, the captain decided to step up to the plate and use a smaller ship, convinced that he could make it work. Nobody believed them, and they all thought that he was mad, but in the end, he proved them all wrong. As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below by using the hashtag SweetTopic. Number 19. Colossal Machine Next up, we have a totally enormous piece of heavy machinery that needed to be moved from the industrial yard in which it was built to its new location at Inter Pipeline, a massive $3.5 billion petrochemical development project across the other side of the region of Alberta in Canada. Now, usually when a large and cumbersome piece of equipment is made, it will be created in parts and then, more often than not, assembled on-site, and this crazy footage is a fairly strong indicator of why that is. This is the 315-foot-long, almost 900-ton, propylene propane splitter that was transported through Canada in 2019. This is the heaviest thing that's ever been moved on an Alberta highway, and it was such a colossal undertaking that no one will be in any hurry to repeat that record-breaking maneuver anytime soon. In fact, it would take four days to creep its way along the highway, and it caused enormous disruptions to motorists and commuters for the whole entire ridiculous journey. Number 18. Lady Liberty's Torch Moves House the Statue of Liberty may be one of the most easily recognizable and iconic sites in the United States. She stood in the New York Harbor since arriving from France in 1885, and for many decades, she would be the first site of the new homeland for countless immigrants as they arrived at Ellis Island and has become more than a statue. She is also a symbol of the idea of freedom and a part of the idea of American identity. 
Lady Liberty has undergone many, many renovations over the years. Standing out there in all of that weather after all, she's no longer a spring chicken. The most extensive period of fixing and maintenance was in the 1980s when she would be covered in scaffolding and thoroughly assessed for damages and structural soundness. It was determined back then that her original torch was actually so damaged that it was deemed beyond repair. That's a bit of a bummer when you consider that that torch had been the symbol of enlightenment, which is said to be there to light the way to freedom by illuminating the path to liberty. So what had to be done to preserve this most iconic of images? That's when they took the torch down in 1984, figuring out that they would have to build a new one. It was no mean feat to remove that 3,600-pound torch in the first place, though. And back then, they put it inside the base of the Statue of Liberty for visitors to view. The original torch, and also a replica of the lady's massive face, then went on another journey, this time across the island to a newly built museum. The moving of such a large and unwieldy object is a tricky business, and it drew the attention of many a reporter and news crew. In the end, the whole wobbly fandango passed without any major catastrophes, and Lady Liberty's torch and spare face found themselves in their new home in the Museum of Liberty Island, ready to greet many more visitors to come. Number 17. The World's Largest Electromagnetic Ring an electromagnet is a device that produces a magnetic field by using an electric current. It consists of a coil of wire wrapped around a magnetic core, and the strength of the magnetic field can be controlled by adjusting the current flowing through the coil. So, this is the Muon G2, a massive electromagnetic ring, and it's the biggest in the whole entire world. What a thrill fest it is for all of you magnet enthusiasts everywhere. Back in the summer of 2013, the team that built this thing would accomplish the impressive task of transporting the 50-foot-wide electromagnet from Long Island to the Chicago suburbs. The 35-day journey covered 3,200 miles over land and sea, and naturally it drew the attention of thousands of spectators. Specially adapted trucks and a 45-ton metal apparatus would be used to keep it flat during transport. The ring was loaded onto a barge, which had sailed for nearly a month along the East Coast, around Florida, and up the Mississippi and Illinois rivers. Finally, it would reach its destination in Illinois, where it arrived on July 26th of 2013. Fermilab, the institution that hosted it, had a celebratory event attended by approximately 3,000 people to welcome this extraordinary achievement in big magnet maneuvering. Number 16. Massive Spar Platform now, don't say I've never given you anything. This is the thrilling story of how a sea platform for natural gas extraction was moved from one place to another. It might just mark the most awesome moment in fancy banana history, if you happen to like that sort of thing. The Asta Hanstein Spar is an impressive floating production storage and offloading unit situated 186 miles offshore in the Norwegian Sea. It holds the great distinction of being the first spar platform on the Norwegian continental shelf, and this thing is named after Asta Hanstein a notable Norwegian painter, writer, and early feminist. During construction, this spar would be built horizontally on barges in a dry dock, and then it was floated onto the transport ship Dockwise Vanguard and transported to a fjord near Stord in western Norway. After being upended in the fjord, the top sides were then installed using the float-over technique, and finally, the spar was towed vertically to its location in the gas field that's situated 300 kilometers on the northwest coast of Norway. Polyester moorings would be used to secure the spar north of the Arctic Circle to the seabed, which lies 1,200 meters below. On December 17th of 2018, production would commence at the spar, marking a significant milestone in its operational history. And after all of that, I sure hope that you haven't fainted from all of the excitement. Number 15. Wind Turbine Blade In February of 2023, workers in China would undertake a super treacherous journey up a mountain to deliver a 250-foot-long wind turbine to the top. Why exactly would they be doing such a thing? Well, naturally, so that it could be filmed and uploaded to the old internet for all of us to enjoy. But also, because the president had made commitments to expand China's wind and solar capacity to at least 1,200 gigawatts and to cap carbon emissions by 2030. The country aims to increase 
increase solar and wind power generation to approximately 11% of total power consumption, so it seems kind of likely that they also wanted this to sort of be an effort that would be seen by the world. Anyway, the footage captures the workers attempting to maneuver this massive blade, which also weighs 19 tons, by the way, along the extremely precariously narrow mountain pass. And as you watch it, it is possible to see the blade wobbling about and swinging slowly from side to side, right at the edge of the mountain with a sheer drop thousands of feet off the cliff. This challenging transportation process took two weeks per blade, exposing the delivery team to extreme temperatures, altitude sickness, heavy storms, and even snow. And this is just one blade. I mean, how many more had to be transported like this, you know? Number 14. Moving the Sky Bridge in a feat of engineering prowess, Mammoth undertook the transportation and installation of a 650-foot-long bridge at Hong Kong International Airport. Dubbed the Sky Bridge, this piece of architecture links HKIA's Terminal 1 with its North Satellite Concourse, which has apparently massively improved the airport's connectivity. To move this colossal 5,100-ton load across a distance of 2.2 miles, the company had employed a fleet of 264 axle lines of self-propelled modular transporters, whatever the heck those are. Onlookers watched as the bridge was carefully raised above the support piers and then lowered into its final resting position. Throughout the intricate welding process, the company's hydraulic experts monitored the Mega Jack's performance, ensuring the execution went on without a hitch. Remarkably, the intricate endeavor would be accomplished in only seven days, which shows that if you do want to get something done in time for a holiday, you know, like the Lunar New Year, then it is is entirely possible. Perhaps there are a few endless roadworks out there that could try this method. Who could possibly say? Number 13. Wreck of Suwall Ferry in April of 2014 in South Korea, the Suwall Ferry embarked on a routine 13-hour journey, and however, tragedy would strike, and it became a rusted wreck. Three years later in 2017, 1,801 days after its departure, the salvaged ferry would arrive at a port, and families of the victims, along with ordinary citizens, would witness the somber moment. The sinking of the Suwall had been the country's most devastating maritime disaster, claiming the lives of over 300 individuals individuals, mainly high school students who were on a field trip. After resting on the seabed at a depth of 145 feet for nearly three years, the ill-fated vessel was finally lifted out of the water in March of 2017. And the search for the missing passengers' bodies then began, after a period of time, to make the vessel safe. The vessel would then be transferred to a dry dock using a rail-like transporter, and it was all very sad, and even if it was kind of an epic maneuver, it's pretty hard to enjoy something as tragic as all of this. Let's just move swiftly on, shall we? Number 12. The James Webb Telescope how do you transport the world's biggest space telescope halfway around the world? Very carefully, I should imagine. This thing is worth a few pennies, you know. In 2021, the NASA James Webb Space Telescope had to be moved before it could be launched into space. It was necessary to transport this massive and very important piece of super expensive rocket science 5,800 miles across the ocean. And in order to ship such an item, it's necessary to pack it all up very carefully indeed, because it was actually put into a massive and custom-built suitcase in order to protect it. This was no regular sort of luggage, though. This suitcase, known as the ST-TARS, or Space Telescope Transporter for Air, Road, and Sea, weighed a staggering 168,000 pounds. It was 18 feet high and 15 feet wide, and an astonishing 110 feet long. There's no way that it could be transported by any normal kind of method. The logistics of transporting anything across this distance, and through this many places, is pretty tricky to handle even at the best of times. But when you factor in the entire extremely sensitive and insanely expensive elements of this particular transportation, that's when you've got a recipe for a headache. This massive machine began its epic voyage in California in September of 21 and then headed off to the Panama Canal so that it could reach its final destination in the very northeastern coast of South America. It then had to be prepared for launch in a process that would take well over two months to complete. However, it did make it and nobody accidentally dropped it into the sea or anything. Number 11. Moving a Steam Generator 
All the way back in 2016, if you happen to be on or even near the Hudson River, you may well have witnessed one of the more weird and decidedly more difficult of our epic transport operations from today's list. This is the strange sight of a massive barge on which rests a tower-like structure as it passed beneath the Rip Van Winkle Bridge in New York. It may not seem like an especially thrilling event, but it was considerably more complex and much, much more difficult to achieve than mere appearances would suggest. In in fact, it would take months of meticulous mathematical calculations and painstaking planning to get it right. A fraction of a calculation wrong, and the entire thing just gets stuck under the bridge or unceremoniously dumped into the Hudson. This is the moving of a huge and extremely unwieldy heat recovery steam generator, and it weighed a ridiculous 4,000 tons, measuring over 120 feet tall. And so, they measured everything very carefully indeed, and then took it real, real slow. The operation did take its time, 36 hours in total, traveling at a speed of just five knots until finally arriving at its destination where it would be ready to be placed in its new location. Number 10. The Big Merino one of the more weird things that you could see in New South Wales and Australia would be the Big Merino. This is actually a 50-foot tall concrete merino ram, because of course it is. The Big Merino has a gift shop in its undercarriage and wool display on its second floor. So this place was a bit of a tourism stop for visitors to the area. That was until a new bypass had to be built in 1992, and the number of visitors took a massive nosedive. And so local authorities decided to do the obvious thing. They took the massive sheep to where the people were going. It now sits farther down the highway at a service station, enjoying all of the tourism dollars that jangle its cash register every day. And that's the story of how the Big Merino took a trip and the people that witnessed it likely wondered if they were tripping as well. Number 9. Largest Oil Rig Ever in these incredible images, we witness the remarkable journey of a colossal oil platform base as it's transported out to sea. The base, known as a jacket, is made of steel and serves as the foundation for the oil platform resting on top. It's interesting to note that approximately 95% of offshore platforms worldwide are designed in this jacket style, suitable for water depths that do not exceed 1,640 feet and securely anchored to the seabed. Well, how riveting that information is. This specific jacket holds a special place in engineering history, though. Back in 1988, the Shell Corporation would install it in the Gulf of Mexico, and it quickly gained fame as one of the most extraordinary engineering achievements of the 20th century. Fondly nicknamed Bullwinkle, this platform held the prestigious title of being the tallest oil rig in the world during its construction. To put its grandeur into perspective, Bullwinkle stands 150 feet taller than the renowned Sears Tower in Chicago. The construction of Bullwinkle required an immense amount of materials and effort. It utilized a staggering 10 times the amount of steel that was used in the Eiffel Tower and weighed over 50,000 tons. Its construction of the jacket alone would take a significant two and a half years, but once completed, the colossal structure then embarked on an epic journey. It was transported in one piece, an impressive 332 nautical miles to its designated location. To accomplish that feat, engineers constructed an enormous 853-foot-long barge, which was the largest of its kind at the time. This gigantic barge would serve as the vessel for Bullwinkle's voyage across the sea. The entire project, from construction to installation, spanned well over five years, requiring a budget that exceeded $500 million in the 1980s. Number 8. Radioactive Waste Back in 2022, a spokesperson for ANSTO would confirm that a container of nuclear waste was safely transported to Lucas Heights in southern Sydney. The container was being transported from a port south of Sydney and is now being stored at ANSO until a national radioactive waste management facility becomes operational. ANSO's Group Executive for Nuclear Operations and Nuclear Medicine would explain that countries are required under international treaties, to take responsibility for the disposal of the nuclear waste that they produce. When asked about the potential risk if the waste were to enter the environment, she assured the media that there was no credible risk of such an incident. A group of bystanders witnessed the arrival of the nuclear waste ship at the port. The ship was carrying reprocessed radioactive waste and stood out with its bright blue color. A comprehensive police operation would be conducted to ensure the safe docking of the ship. Police jet skis, helicopters, and boats 
boats all accompanied the vessel into the port, while police officers lined the port banks. After the ship had arrived, roads were closed all along the route that the waste would be driven. It was then contained in molten glass, canisters, and steel casks, moved during an overnight police operation to Anstow's interim waste storage facility in Lucas Heights. Now, moving nuclear waste is one of the trickiest things to transport, obviously, because there are many rules and regulations and protocols that all have to be followed to the masses of laws, both federal and international, that govern how and when it can be done. This is probably a good thing, because if it were to go wrong, it could be really rather serious indeed, now wouldn't it? Number 7. Levitated Mass Transport in 2012, Michael Heiser created a monumental public art sculpture called Levitated Mass at the Resnick North Lawn of the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. This impressive installation featured a massive boulder sculpture that weighed 340 tons, positioned above a 456-foot pathway designed for panoramic 360-degree viewing. That's a whole lot of numbers. The nature, cost, and sheer scale of this artwork would spark discussions within the public art community, and its remarkable 106-mile journey from a valley in Riverside County would garner extensive media coverage. The artwork consists of a towering 21 and a half foot boulder that is securely positioned on the walls of a lengthy 456 foot concrete trench. This trench, surrounded by over two acres of densely packed decomposed granite, ensures stability and the boulders fastened to two shelves that are attached to the inner walls of the trench. The trench then descends from ground level, reaching a depth of 15 feet below the center of the stone. This unique design allows visitors to stand directly beneath the massive boulder, creating an immersive experience with the art. But the transport of such a huge boulder to this location was what really caused the stir. In fact, it became utterly ridiculous. Originally scheduled for transport in August of 2011, the journey would encounter permit difficulties which led to multiple delays. Then finally, in February of 2012, it would depart from the quarry to facilitate its transport, a custom-built transporter that measured 295 feet in length would be equipped with 196 wheels, all courtesy of Emert International. Due to the transporter's size, the boulder could only be moved at night, reaching a maximum speed of approximately 7 miles per hour. And despite the relatively short distance of less than 60 miles between where it began and ended, a lengthy 106-mile route had to be chosen, spanning 22 cities across four counties. That was in order to avoid busy roads and weight-restricted overpasses. Trees had to be cleared, cars were towed, and traffic lights were removed to accommodate the transporter's passage. And throughout the 11 days that it took, large crowds would gather to witness the boulder's movement and its stops during the day, spontaneous block parties, and even a marriage proposal would occur at resting points. Eventually, at around 4.30 a.m. on March the 10th of 2012, the transporter arrived, attracting an estimated crowd of over a thousand eager spectators who were awaiting the installation's arrival. It's all utter madness for a great big giant rock. Number 6. The Toronto Elephants Transporting elephants is a tricky business. Who knew? In 2013, three older elephants were scheduled to be moved from the Toronto Zoo to the Paws Sanctuary in California. That's a long journey for anyone to take, especially a great big old elephant, so it took a lot of planning and a huge operation to transport the precious cargo. Trainers had dedicated over a year to diligently preparing the elephants for the move, ensuring their comfort inside of the transport crates. When the journey then began, regular updates on their well-being were provided by the team who was responsible for their care and they reported that the animals were consuming sufficient hay, water, and getting ample rest. The handlers took measures to ensure their comfort, including installing panels on the transport trailers to keep them warm. Accompanied by skilled handlers and veterinarians, the elephants traveled under their care. One expert would mention that these were the most calm elephants that she had ever worked with. During that trip, the team made several stops along the way to provide the elephants with rest and food and water, and the convoy was equipped with 54 bales of hay. The whole exciting the exciting event would be documented and then turned into a documentary so that all of us could enjoy the thrills of the slow and steady elephant transport for all of time. Lucky old us. Number 5. NASA's Crawler Transporter 
All of the stuff that NASA uses to launch things into space is extremely big and excessively cumbersome, and this presents more than a couple of issues when it comes to transportation. The Crawler Transporter, also known as the Missile Crawler Transporter Facility, is a super cool tracked vehicle that NASA uses to move spacecraft from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Launch Complex 39. They started out their career in the Apollo, Skylab, and Apollo Zoyuz programs, where they transported those massive Saturn IB and Saturn V rockets. Later on, they became the go-to transporters for the space shuttles from 1989 to 2011, and these monster-sized machines carry the vehicles on mobile launcher platforms and make their way back to the pad to bring the platform back to the vehicle assembly building. They were designed and built by the Marion Power Shovel Company, with some help from Rockwell International, costing a whopping $14 million each. In today's money, that's $128.5 million. When they were first built, they held the title of the largest self-powered land vehicle on the planet. However, that reign would end in 2013 when the ultra-heavy XGC88000 crawler crane came into the picture. These remarkable machines have even earned a spot in the National Register of Historic Places, so the next time you see a spacecraft being moved on television, remember the incredible crawler transporters that make it all possible, because they are the true giants of the land vehicle world. Number 4. The Fairmount Hotel Sometimes a historic building happens to be standing around in a super inconvenient spot, clogging up a whole load of prime real estate. What an inconsiderable piece of history, ruining things for the profiteering wealth hoarders of America. But what do you do if a pesky building with some boring old cultural value is getting in the way of the almighty dollar? Well, usually you just knock it down. I mean, it's an out-of-date, unique piece of architecture, right? What we really need is 500 identical condos instead. But fortunately, America is as as crazy as it is destructive, and there happened to be a second solution. The building can simply be moved. That's right, they can pick it up and move it to a different location altogether. One such building was the Fairmount Hotel in San Antonio, Texas. The building was a 75-year-old three-story brick-built hotel that weighed a ridiculously heavy 3.2 million pounds, and some bright spark figured the best thing to do with it was pick it up and pop it onto some wheels and then move it about six blocks to hang out with a bunch of other old historic buildings. It took a complex maneuver to lift it off its foundation, and then using a total of 36 specially designed dollies, which have hydraulic lifts and eight sets of wheels like the type that are typically used for mining, they then managed to move the hotel down the street. The trickiest bit was turning the corner, though. It made it and has gone down in history as the heaviest building to ever be moved in such a way. Number 3. GE Turbine Back in 2017, a remarkable event unfolded in New York as a colossal General Electric turbine made its way through the state. This massive turbine weighed a staggering 187 tons and was being transported from GE's plant to a power plant near Scranton, Pennsylvania. The New York State Police, responsible for overseeing the transport, would provide updates on the monumental journey. The transportation of the turbine would garner attention due to its sheer size and weight, measuring an astonishing 345 feet in length and 20 feet in width. The turbine posed a unique challenge for road travel. Its journey through central New York affected traffic as it followed a carefully planned route passing through Cortland County, Tompkins County, and Lansing. Despite a brief delay, a truck carrying the turbine eventually arrived in Ithaca, prompting road closures and alternative routes. Motorists were advised to exercise caution and remain alert as the colossal transport maneuvered through the streets, disrupting everyone's regular traffic patterns. It took an entire host of people with the planning skills of Martha Stewart at a presidential banquet to get this massive machine from one place to the next, and the logistics would have boggled the brains of even the most experienced UPS driver. Number 2. Moving a Submarine in 2004, a fascinating operation took place to move the historic German submarine U-505. This World War II submarine, now a museum exhibit, was relocated from its longtime home at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago to a new exhibit space within the museum. Moving it was a complex and meticulous process. The submarine weighed around 700 tons, measuring 252 feet in length, and had to be carefully lifted from its display area and then transported across the museum's grounds. To 
accomplish all of this, a team of experts utilized a system of hydraulic jacks, steel beams, and dollies to raise and support the massive vessel. Once raised, it was carefully guided along a specially constructed track to the new location. The move would require precise coordination, as any miscalculation could have caused significant damages to the historic submarine. Ultimately, the operation would be a success, and the U-505 found its new home in a dedicated exhibit space, where it continues to captivate visitors with its wartime history and engineering marvels. Number 1. The Orphan Grey Whale Back in 1997, a desperately unwell three-day-old gray whale calf would be discovered in the waters off the coast of Marina del Rey in California. This whale was an orphan that had become dehydrated, hypoglycemic, and was discovered in a comatose state. It didn't look good, but SeaWorld San Diego then stepped in to rescue the baby and nurse it back to health. The whale would be taken to SeaWorld, where she began a long road to rehabilitation in the care of specialists, and after 15 months, she gained almost 20,000 pounds and would be restored to health. This was the moment that it would be decided to return the mammal to the ocean. One thing is moving a 1,500-pound baby when it's a matter of life and death, but it's quite a different thing to move a 20,000-pound grown whale safely back to the sea. That takes a whole lot of careful logistical support. These incredible images show the lengths that the SeaWorld staff had to go to to make it happen, but they did it, and the story of this gray whale's rehabilitation remains one of the greatest success stories to this day. Whew, that's a relief now, isn't it? Thanks for hanging out with me on this cumbersome but epic journey. Which of these crazy transport operations was the most insane, and have you ever seen anything weird being moved around? As always, let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.